it's one of those recent late March days. A little warmer. There is a strong sun singing from the blue. I'm playing catch with my son Miles in the backyard on brown grass. Then we kick a soccer ball around. We stomp on the ice, still lingering in the shade. And then there, in the corner of the yard, underneath some decaying hosta leaves, there, in the neighbor's yard, can it be? The long lost green frisbee. Back in August, we assumed a dog ran off with it or a kid found a new toy. Beneath the decay, the snow finally now melted. There it was. The green frisbee had returned. We danced, we jumped up and down, we celebrated. Let's tell mama. We whisked the green frisbee back and forth. Joy, thou goddess. A few people asked me earlier this week, is joy still the theme for this Sunday? Yes, joy is still the theme. Right now, this time, joy is needed more than ever. Yes, joy in the middle of a pandemic. For joy has within it the ability to acknowledge suffering. We can acknowledge the pain of the world, specifically the suffering related to the COVID-19 pandemic. We can acknowledge our own disruption of life's routines and the arduous pain of learning new technology. Joy allows us to move into our pain, or at least recognize it, the grit and the funk we have been going through. Joy is reunion. Joy is connection. Joy is spring. Joy is crocuses. Joy is Passover. Enslavement to freedom is joy. Easter is joy. A wounded, bloodied body to new, unexpected life is indeed joy. In Albuquerque, there was a congregant who was part of a small group ministry I led at a senior living home. He was very, let's just say, opinionated about many things. He was especially opinionated in his disbelief of God. But I also remember him vividly saying, I may not believe in God, but I do believe in capital J, capital O, capital Y, joy. Joy is my goddess. Like stop sign red is a basic primary color. Joy is a basic primary human emotion. Something comes up from the limbic system deep within our mammalian brains and yet connects us throughout the wholeness of our minds. We experience joy so viscerally, I think, because joy has to do with parental care. Children wander off. We need a motivational system that seeks out the lost and reinforces return. The parent smiles and the baby smiles back. Joyful, joyful, we adore you. Babies begin smiling at two months. There is so much emotion in those cute chubby faces and by six months 
Their smiles are full of charismatic charm, bursting forth like flowers. At birth, innate in us is the cry to meet basic needs. And then shortly after is the smile, an indication of joy. So naturally, we are hardwired for connection, for social bonding. We move so easily and so quickly from narcissism to love. Well, at least most of us do. Joy is also in the kitten's purr and the puppy's wagging tail. There has to be some joy to parenting or we would never do it. Another form of ancient joy, the earliest of games, peekaboo. Gone, return. Gone, return. Joy is being united again, united again with the lost. Jesus tells a story of a son who asked for his inheritance early, leaves the family, squanders the money, a famine breaks out. He wishes he could but eat the food of the pigs. He returns home full of shame and remorse. And to his surprise, the father throws a joyous feast. Joy, you goddess of return. Jesus also tells another parable of joy. A woman has 10 silver coins. She loses one of them. She lights a lamp, sweeps the house, and searches carefully until she finds it. When she finds it, she calls together her friends, neighbors, and saying, rejoice with me. I have found the coin I had lost. There is joy in the presence of angels, Jesus concludes, over one sinner who repents. Joy, thou goddess of the lost. We praise the glorious return of our children, the glorious return of our coins and frisbees. Joy at times can feel so intense, we may be afraid to talk about it, afraid to go into it, as Mary Oliver says. Joy is private, but also in a way public. In a world right now with what appears to be growing suffering, growing loss due to the pandemic, we can still participate in the joys of life. We not only can, we must. We cannot isolate ourselves off from joy. Joy has a lot to do with being triumphant. For those of you that follow or play sports, when your team wins the championship, you know exactly what I mean. Joy, thou goddess of triumph. Often joy comes after much suffering. One of the world's greatest composers, Ludwig von Beethoven, was traumatized as a child. His father was an abusive alcoholic. A childhood friend of Ludwig once said, there were few days when he was not beaten in order to compel him at the piano. He was occasionally locked in the cellar by his father. And whenever Ludwig played poorly, Beethoven's father proclaimed that he was an embarrassment to the family. At the age of 30, he became depressed because he was going deaf. He hinted 
that he would kill himself if his deafness grew. In his diary, he later wrote, O oh, Providence, grant me at least one day of pure joy. It has been so long since real joy echoed in my heart. His hearing became worse and worse. And just three years before he died, he finished his most glorious piece of music, some regarded as the pinnacle of Western art music, choir and symphony orchestra combined like the world had never seen before. The Ninth Symph Symphony was so powerfully joyous and innovative, it took nearly a century for someone to dare compose more than nine symphonies. The last movement of Beethoven's Ninth was based on a Friedrich Schiller poem. The point of that poem was that joy was found in human unity. But I would say it's less about the words. Sorry, all you poets out there. The words only make sense emotionally with Beethoven's music. The words only make emotional sense when sung with soloists and a huge choir. Joy, joy must be sung. It had to be music and it had to be the human voice, that which touches the limbic system. We feel Beethoven's pain and his joy. He surely was granted one full day of pure joy. Joy, thou goddess. And in 1824, he conducts the opening performance, a, a grand ensemble of singers and musicians. At the very end, Beethoven continued conducting even though the music had ended. One of the soloists stopped him turned him around to accept his applause. The audience was well aware of Beethoven's hearing loss. So in addition to clapping, they threw their hats and scarves in the air so that he could see their overwhelming approval and adoration of his music. Joy, you triumphant goddess. The last movement of the Ninth Symphony is all about return reconnecting and reuniting. In my undergraduate studies, professor asked the class, how many of you seen or heard or played Beethoven's Ninth Symphony in its entirety? When only two hands went up, the next class we spent watching a performance. If you haven't done it, if you haven't done it in a while, or you are in the need of some joy. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, especially the last movement, is your homework for the week. Knowing Beethoven's abusive father, what I find most joyous is Schiller's words that Beethoven accepted as his own. Be embraced, all you millions, with a kiss for all the world. Siblings, beyond the stars surely dwells a loving father. Whether we believe in God or not, the goddess joy proves something over and over to us. Pain and suffering can be overcome with the return of thou goddess, joy. His hearing never returned, but joy, unfettered, returned. Mary Oliver's advice, likewise, is profound.
when it comes to joy. Don't hesitate. Go into joy. When it suddenly knocks on your heart, follow it. Let it lead you. When you find the green frisbee, celebrate with dancing. When you find the lost coin, rejoice. When the child returns, throw a party. When the baby smiles, smile back even bigger. Give in to joy. Don't hesitate. When deafness and depression sets in, compose your own ode to joy. Despite the pandemic, life still has plenty of possibilities. Our way back to have some, our way back is to have some unhesitant joy. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Don't be afraid of its plenty. Amen and blessed be. Joy be with you.